I've been wanting to make a video about French fighting game characters for a while now, and after seeing France win the World Cup this year, I had a perfect excuse to do it. However, it just so happened that I was quite busy at the time, so that's why you're watching this way after the hype for the tournament has run its course. I do hope you enjoy it just the same though, so let's get to it, shall we? A few ground rules first. No repetition of characters from the same franchise, as I usually do, and this time I will also opt to leave out any characters based on Joan of Arc, the famous historical figure. The reason for that is that there's too many of them and, well, obviously they look very similar to each other. I'd much rather have a more diverse list of characters than many variations of the same concept, so these girls will have to wait for another opportunity to be featured. For now though, let's take a look at 5 other fighting game characters from France. We'll start this list with a Street Fighter representative, and while I could have easily chosen someone else from the franchise, I decided to go with our old pal from Third Strike, Remy, who is not too likely to return anytime soon. Being from France, I bet the right way to say his name is something like Remy, but since I'm not too sure about it, I'll just stick to the pronunciation that most of us are probably more familiar with. Remy seems like a calm and composed person, but in reality he is a cruel and nihilistic warrior, full of wrath and hostility. Though he sees fighting as a futile lifestyle, as he victimizes people, destroys love and creates hatred, his words, he continues to fight out of an inability to forgive people like his father, who abandoned his own family to pursue the path of the warrior. His sister, who died during their father's absence, was encased by Remy in a block of ice underwater to be preserved. I don't know how popular the anime Saint Seiya is where you're from, but here in Brazil it has one hell of a following, which makes it impossible not to see the similarities with the fate of Natasha, the mother of Yoga, one of the main characters. This was likely done on purpose though, to pay homage to Masami Kurumada's famous manga series. Remy's resentment towards his father is of such a level of vindication that he reports fighters he defeats for the authorities to deal with, and his almost possessive hatred may very well be to the point of madness. At least Alex seems to think so, as he tells Remy during their pre-battle rival dialogue that he is insane and needs to seek the help of a psychiatrist. As for gameplay, Remy fights using the French martial art of Savate, and his special moves are very similar to those of Gaio and Nash. Rising Flash is basically a flash kick, Cold Blue Kick is a forward moving kick that later serve as inspiration to one of Gaio's new moves in Ultra Street Fighter 4 Omega mode. And Remy also has his own variation of the Sonic Boom, called Lights of Virtue, which has both high and low versions. In Third Strike, Remy is arguably one of the few characters that can effectively control space at all times and at any range, with a combination of powerful long-range attacks and zoning techniques. He's usually on the bottom part of the tier list though, so if you plan to use him on a competitive level, it's a good idea to be prepared for an uphill battle. The next French fighter in our list is Shermi, first seen in the King of Fighters 97, who you might remember from when I covered her teammate, Chris, in another video. Shermi is very outgoing and friendly, she doesn't seem to take battle too seriously, even dancing around and picking up her cell phone during battle. She's even known for blowing a kiss toward her opponents before the battle begins. Like we saw in Chris's backstory, Shermi, Chris and Yashiro were in a band called CYS, where Shermi played the keyboards. They decided to enter the King of Fighters tournament due to Yashiro's grudge against rival band player, Yori Yagami. Since they weren't originally qualified for the tournament, the trio got their invitations by individually beating up and stealing the ones belonging to the members of the sports team, with Charmy defeating Heavy D. Although she doesn't start the game knowing this, Charmy is one of the four heavenly kings of Orochi, powerful warriors that control elements of nature and possess some of his original abilities. As such, it's her duty to use the tournament to gather enough power to awaken Orochi, a plan that succeeds after he takes control of Chris's body. She continues to appear both in the KOF franchise and spin-off titles, like the recent SNK Heroines Tag Team Frenzy, though it's believed that, canonically, all members of the new face team perished after KOF 97. This is made very clear in their ending and supported by the fact that they're more than willing to give their lives for the resurrection of Orochi. Her fighting style, when not making use of her Orochi powers, heavily relies on grappling techniques. She doesn't play quite the same way as other grapplers like Roth and Clark, however, 
but rather operates with better aerial control via anti-air and air-to-air -air attacks that allow her to zone out characters or pressure them into cross-up and empty hop command throw setups. On her awakened form, Shermi abandons some of her wrestling moves and relies more on lightning-based attacks. Canon-wise, she might be much more powerful, but in reality her Orochi version has a rather weird array of moves and specials, making her difficult to use, especially if you're planning to go up against a human opponent. But that's enough about Shermi. Let's move on to a character you might not be so aware of, Jean-Pierre from Fighter's History. He's a French gymnast who has always achieved perfect scores until the day he scored a 9.98. I know, what a tragedy, right? Since then he began picking martial arts in order to improve his grace and strength, choosing to take part of the tournament as a way to measure the result of his training. He's quite a narcissist, just like Vega, tends to be flirtatious with the female cast and throws a rose as a projectile. Jean-Pierre is a charge character that takes inspiration from Gaio for some of his special moves and probably sits among the best options in the roster. He has good zoning tools, an outstanding flash kick called Flick Flack, and some devastating moves for pressure and damage like the Chojaku Nido Shower. There isn't much more to say about him though, as Fighter's History never had the same kind of impact as the previous games in this list. But I guess that if you're looking for a French fighter that can sorta of play like Gaio, at least tier-wise you're better off picking this guy than Street Fighter's Remy. And I'll take a break from 2D fighting games and add an extra dimension to our battles, as my next fighter from France is no other than Amy Sorel from the Soul Calibur series. First appearing in Soul Calibur 2's opening video sequence, Amy made her playable debut in Soul Calibur 3, with a moveset identical to the rapier discipline used by custom characters. By the time Soul Calibur 4 came around, she was a main unlockable character that used a mixture of the Rapier Discipline from Soul Calibur 3, along with some moves borrowed from Raphael. When she was first seen, Amy was a poor orphan who lived on the streets of Rouen, present-day France. Her parents had died of a plague, the Black Death, that had spread across all of Europe during that time period. One day she came across a man named Raphael Sorel, who was being chased by the local authorities. She hid him from the soldiers and, in return, he vowed to protect and repay her. Eventually they develop a father-daughter relationship, with Amy going so far as to adopt his surname. Her character is in contrast to Talim, as they are both young and pretty females. Even though she has an innocent appearance, Amy behaves much more ruthlessly, probably due to the combination of the tragic loss of her parents, harsh childhood in poverty and the influence of Raphael. Her trademark gothic Lolita-inspired outfit matches her cold demeanor and pessimism. Raphael appears to be the only one that she cares about in the world. In Soul Calibur 5, Raphael's artwork has him holding Emmy's skull ornament with a thorn ribbon, which most likely means that during the 17 years between Soul Calibur 4 and 5, Amy was lost and he's looking for her. However, the new character Viola bears an uncanny resemblance to her and, coincidentally, has no memory of her past. Notably, Amy and Viola share many thematic elements of their design as well as both of their voice actors, which makes many fans speculate that Viola is, in fact, Amy. Although this has not been confirmed in game in any way, nor officially by Project Soul. As for gameplay, Amy possesses a relatively large number of useful options in her repertoire. She shares many of Raphael's attacks, mainly throws, and her individual strikes, though weak, allow her to keep momentum, providing an extremely high cumulative damage output. Her biggest drawbacks are the fact that her most damaging attacks tend to be easily sidestepped, and she also doesn't have many moves that can knock an opponent out of the ring. However, with all things considered, Emmy tends to do very well in tournaments and is generally regarded as a top tier character. So that's enough about Emmy. We'll end this list with another very obscure French fighter, Jacques Ducals, from the also obscure title Buriki One. To those unfamiliar with it, Buriki One is a 3D fighting game produced by SNK and released for arcades in 1999. It was developed for SNK's short lived Hyper Neo Geo 64 hardware but never officially ported to home consoles, although a PlayStation version was in the plans at some point. If you're a follower of the channel, you might remember this game being brought up before, when Paiaxi Tipitak made it into one of my lists of Muay Thai characters in fighting games. 
As for Jacques, he is a very successful judo champion and current director of the French Judo Society. He believes fighters must always evolve, but was worried he wasn't doing that. So when he received a letter asking him to point the best of his students to enter the tournament, he pointed himself. Jacques is a cool-minded and experienced fighter that loves his martial art and strives to continually improve. As it would be expected from his style, he mainly uses grappling submission maneuvers when fighting. The character is clearly inspired by two-times Olympic gold medalist David Dulé, a French judoka, and Royce Grace, a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt. As to how he plays the game, I'm gonna have to leave you all hanging here. I don't really have much Puriki 1 experience, certainly not enough to judge any character's viability, and it's really tough to find a good, thorough guide of the game, so yeah, you're on your own. If you do know, please share with us in the comment section. Anyways, that's it for the French Fighters video, everybody. I'm sorry I could not release it closer to the World Cup to make it more relevant, but I do hope you enjoyed it just the same. Obviously, I had to leave out many other characters, so maybe one day we'll revisit this topic to cover a few more of those. For now, feel free to share your favorites in the comment section, I'm always open to suggestions. I would also like to take a brief moment now to talk about some of my other projects. The links to all of them will be in the description of this video. The first one is called World Warrior, a real play RPG show using the Street Fighter system that I started a few weeks ago. Our players come from all around the world and include some friends I met through this channel. It's a different take on this now popular genre of podcast and I do believe it's quite funny and filled with adventures. I even borrowed the name of some of my viewers here to use as NPCs or locations in that game from time to time. If this sounds like something that sparks your interest, do give it a go if you can. It's available on iTunes and most of the other popular podcast apps if that's your preferred way of listening to them. The second project is my still-in-development card game called Double KO. It's like a fighting game played with cards, where you need to combine directional and attack inputs to perform special moves and combos. It will feature many nods to the FGC in general and 10 original characters, all beautifully drawn and with their own unique way of playing. I don't have much to show for you guys at this time, not unless you live near me, but eventually I might have to start some kind of crowdfunding campaign to see this thing become a reality, so, you know, stay tuned for more news in the future. And for my third and final piece of news, I just recently created a Patreon page, in case some of you out there are in a position where you can spare a few bucks to help support the channel. I promise not to bother you too much with it though, so I will probably not be mentioning it too often, but the link will be in the description in case you decide to help. Rest assured, any amount will be greatly appreciated. Well, that's it for now guys. Thanks for watching this video, I hope you had fun and maybe learned something new, and I'll see you guys later.